Hey, you're listening to episode 171 of the Keto Diet Podcast, and today we're chatting all about food. I love food. We're going to be talking about my favorite things, what I stock my pantry with, provisioning, and everything keto yumminess. If you have questions about today's content, head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. This is where I get all of my ideas for podcast episodes. So if there's something that you want me to cover, you have questions about what I covered and you want me to get more in depth, head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact where you can tell me what you want me to cover on today's show or future shows, I guess you could say. Also, if you want to catch up on previous podcast episodes or you want to check out today's show notes, including all the links and resources that I'm sharing in today's episode, head on over to ketodietpodcast.com and then look for episode 171 on that page And there you go. Okay, I got two things that I want to cover with you today. One of them is a cool thing, and one of them is like a not so cool thing, but we're just going to run with it. The first thing, the cool thing, is that I've put together a free guide for y'all. You can get it at healthfulpursuit.com slash free, and it is a keto starter guide. So if you are a couple of hours, a couple of days, or a couple of weeks into your ketogenic diet, and you're just looking for support, head on over to healthfulpursuit.com dot com slash free. And then the second thing is I've noticed recently now this was back, I don't know, in like May when I noticed that this was happening and I posted a video about it on Instagram and all of you were so supportive and amazing, but I'm noticing it happening again. So I thought I would just bring it to everyone's attention. I'm getting really bad reviews for the show. And a lot of them have to do with ads and the fact that there are too many ads, that there are even ads on the show. And so I just thought it would be helpful for like two seconds if I just told you what goes into podcast episodes and why I will never, ever take ads off the show ever again, because I did. Last summer of 2018, for three months, I removed all ads from the show. Our listens went down, our downloads went down, our revenue went down so much that we had to let go of half of our team and we just couldn't make it work. So we brought ads back. Um, We used to have three ads per episode. Now we only have two. And if you've been following Healthful Pursuit for a day or a year or since the very beginning in 2000 and what was it? 2008 when Healthful Pursuit started. Oh my goodness. Then you know that I only recommend products that I love and use and love to death. So The ads help pay for the show. Every time we create an episode, I have to work on it for about four hours. Like to make it a good episode, it takes me about four hours from start to finish with the show notes and the links and the resources and the free guides and all the things that I do to make this episode and each episode really special. And then it goes off to our editor and he edits it and QAs it and uploads it and makes YouTube videos and images and all the things that we need. And then we have our designer that makes additional images images and then I post it and share it all over the place and we have to find hosting for it um, so that you guys can listen to previous episodes and there's a lot that goes into it. So you know, haters gonna hate and that's totally fine. And there are services out there like Netflix, which you pay a small fee for so that you don't have to have ads. But because this podcast is free, the only way that I can keep it going is that I have ads. And so I hope that that makes sense. I hope if you're one of those people that just doesn't like ads that you know, you understand that you can just fast forward through them. That's why I've made it very, very clear when there's an ad with the sound, you can be like, I don't like that sound fast forwarding through the ad because you don't want to save money on keto things that I love or that other people love. And you have no interest in that. That's totally fine. But fast forward through them if you hate them, listen to them if you love them. I'm always trying to come up with fun and new, exciting ideas. And there are a couple partners like Perfect Keto, for example, who I love and use every day. And I couldn't imagine a world where they weren't in it. And um, so I hope that that um, explains some things. And thank you to anyone who leaves a review for the show, good, bad, indifferent, whatever you'd like. Take a couple moments to go to healthfulpursuit.com slash review and leave a review for the show. And if you love it, if you hate it, whatever you'd like. And obviously, if you love it, I'd love that more, but I'll take anything you got. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones and heal your body. 
Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code keto podcast. That's all one word. This 30 day program gives you a clear step by step how to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles and get the results you crave. Go to healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international bestselling author of The Keto Diet, founder of HappyKetoBody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Sweet. Okay. So today's episode is broken up into two parts. The first part, I'm just going to chat with y'all about some ideas that I have around keto foods. And then the second part is a recording that I did a couple of months ago on keto oils, proteins, and sweeteners. Now, this was a video that I did in celebration of launching my cookbook, the Keto Diet Cookbook, back in April. And I really love the video. And we covered so many things that I thought sharing the audio with you on the podcast would be really helpful. And these videos don't get seen by many people. So I'm guessing you haven't heard it yet. And there's a lot of good little bits in there. So I thought I'd share it. So let's start off first by chatting about um, really how I see the ketogenic diet and why I think it's kind of like funny and also frustrating at the same time. Why people make out keto to be like so scary and intimidating and complicated. The ketogenic diet, as I see it, is really the standard food pyramid flipped upside down when it comes to your carbohydrates and your fats. So if you look at the standard, now the food pyramids change to my plate. I think in Canada, we still have the pyramid. I can never remember because I just think it's all crazy making. But if you think of everywhere that you ate carbohydrates, you're now eating fats. And everywhere where you ate fats, you're now having carbohydrates. That's legit the difference. Like I don't see any other difference other than those two things. So you're really flipping the numbers, more fat, less carbs, super simple. And do you have to be in a constant state of ketosis all the time to achieve keto or to be keto? Maybe, maybe not. Now, if you have a health imbalance and your doctor said, I need you to be keto, never stop being keto. We need you to be keto. Then you should probably like track your macros and be quite stringent with your approach. But if you're just like a regular person like me who just wants to live their best life and feel better, you don't need to be that strict with it. Now, there are times where I go days, weeks, even months eating all keto foods, never having a carb up, just like eating keto day in, day out, and followed by days, weeks, eh, mostly days or weeks or or alternative days where one day I have keto stuff, one day I don't where from an outside perspective, I may not be actually eating quote unquote keto. Like in a couple of episodes ago, I shared about the fact that I had a banana with nut butter for lunch one day and was like, that's what I felt like. When you become metabolically efficient, like as seen in the ketogenic diet, after five years of doing this, guys, my body is very metabolically efficient. And I find that when I eat keto too long, I get too thin and my body fat percentage goes down too low where I don't get my period. And for me, that period is the most important thing to me and making sure that when I experience PMS, it's not like this crazy painful experience. And so I really, really base my hormones and the way I feel during my period uh, throughout my cycle as being the thing that I watch for and how I adjust my ketogenic diet. So I'm not in a ketogenic state all the time, but you really, really need to listen to your body and understand that everything we put in our body makes up our cells. So if you're thinking of, you know, cellular rejuvenation and you're really interested in fasting, but like you're eating like garbage, I never understood that. Like I've talked to so many people that do not care about their food quality, but then really force their body to fast because they're interested in autophagy. And I'm like, that makes no sense because autophagy is benefiting your cells and it's like a cellular turnover and really refreshing your cells, but yet you don't care about your food quality because that also impacts your cells. So if you're thinking about foods and things like that, 
It's really important to eat organic when it comes to spinach, bell peppers, greens, tomatoes, herbs, snap peas, celery, and cucumber. That's like the basis. And that's really how I structure my ketogenic diet. I really start with produce. That's like the most important thing on my ketogenic diet is produce. And then I work at protein. Now, wait, I forgot something on produce. So I live in a sailboat, so my approach to produce is probably a lot different than yours, but you could also maybe benefit from this information. When I go to the grocery store, um, specifically when I go to markets, because that's usually where I get my produce, I look for produce that has never been cold. So things like apples, potatoes, sweet potatoes, those things I never put in the fridge. Tomatoes, I put them in a drawer in one of our bedrooms. I know that sounds weird, but that's like where we store our food is like in the bedrooms and in the floor boards of our boat. And so in one of the bedrooms, I have baskets that I've set up where I have potatoes, apples, tomatoes. Am I forgetting something? Probably. And I, they're just in separate baskets in the dark, in a cool place. And when it's set up that way, I can keep that stuff fresh and good for like months at a time, like months. And if they're not cold, if they've never been chilled, they'll last. Now, if you take a potato that's been chilled and you put it out on the counter it's not going to end well for you. <laughs> no, just don't do that. It gets really mushy. I've tried it. Don't do it. So it's kind of how I store and prepare produce. Now there's also a really good product and I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. It's from Rubbermaid and they're these green containers. I'll include a link in the show notes. I'll find it on Amazon and include it. And it has a, it's a clear container, but it has a green mesh at the bottom and it's for keeping like kale or strawberries. I use it for a lot of berries and stuff for produce in the fridge. So it keeps all that stuff super crisp and away from moisture. So it lasts like so long. And then in addition to those containers, I also have uh, produce bags that I purchased off Amazon. I'll include a link in the show notes for these as well. And I keep um, larger produce in there that don't fit in the little baskets that I have in the fridge. And then on top of that, I also have Rubbermaid containers. They're Rubbermaid Brilliance containers. I'll include a link in the show notes because every time I make an Instagram live with these containers in there, I get questions about what the heck they are because they're like these vacuum sealed containers. They don't leak. They are amazing, mind-blowing, great. And I use that for all of our leftovers. Now, I used to use a lot of glass containers to store our leftovers. I still use a lot of silicone containers, but I really like the Brilliance containers because they're leak proof. And when you live on a boat and your and your fridge is going sideways, it's really important to make sure that things don't leak. Back to today's episode in a sec. Today's episode is sponsored by my friends over at Perfect Keto, who is an awesome company that I've been working with over the last two years, and I love their commitment to quality, their ability to know what us keto people need, because most of their staff are keto themselves. I use their products to stay into ketosis, burn more fat, extend my fast, and satisfy my sweet tooth. Now, if you're new to the ketogenic diet, Perfect Keto is a brand that you must know. All of their products help you get on the diet, make the transition easier, have you experiencing ketosis a little bit faster with boosted energy so that you really start to benefit from ketosis and you don't get discouraged by all of the symptoms that can pop up if you're not supplementing with electrolytes or not having enough fat or still having too many artificial sweeteners. And my favorite part to this, guys, is when you're new to keto, you can often have that afternoon slump by supplementing with some of their products, specifically their exogenous ketones or their keto collagen and even a little bit of their MCT oil powder. You can help avoid that afternoon slump that we can often experience as we are transitioning to the ketogenic diet. Now, my personal favorite Perfect Keto products include their Keto Bars, Almond Butter Brownie, Has My Heart, it is the perfect dessert. Exogenous ketones help to maintain my energy level and give my brain a certain edge that I need every day. And lastly, their nut butter is out of this world. Amazing. Stick that stuff in the freezer, let it sit for 24 hours and go to town. I use their stuff on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times a day. And if you go to perfectketo.com slash KDP, you can get 20% off their products and up to 25% off, a total of $34 off when you grab my favorites as a bundle. Again, that's perfectketo.com slash KDP. Okay, back to today's episode. 
So that's really produce. And then we get to meat. Now, with my meat, I purchase it from ButcherBox mostly, but if Publix has a sale and they have a couple of really good brands, I'll buy a bunch of meat there. And when I get home, because we have to buy so much food to last six months, sometimes a year on our boat, I make sure to um, take out all the packaging, recycle what I can, and then put them in vacuum seal packs so that they can be compressed in my freezer and it's a lot easier to find things. Now, this is kind of wasteful because you're taking it from one package to another. So if you live in a house where you don't care about the packaging, just keep it where it is. But I really, really, really love my vacuum sealer. I'll include a link in the show notes for the one that I use and really love. So I repackage them. I put little stickers on the side. You know, you can just get them from Walmart. Uh, there's like neon colors like pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And so like blue is chicken, pink is beef, orange is pork, and so on. So I can see very quickly what meats I have in the freezer. In the freezer, I have little Ikea drawers. They're not even drawers. They're like baskets that I've made into drawers just to keep everything separate. And I'll actually rotate my meat. This is another great tip. And something that I found really, really challenging when I was grocery shopping once a week and not provisioning as much. But what I do now is in my freezer, I'll go chicken, pork, fish, beef, repeat. Chicken, pork, beef, fish, repeat. And so in my little containers, I have a bunch of different meats in each one. So every time I go into the freezer, I just pick out the one that's in front and we're rotating our proteins at every meal, which can be really helpful, not only to keep things fresh and exciting, <laughs> but also to keep my stores going, to keep us uh, not getting bored from our food. And it always helps me um, to keep things balanced when it comes to protein. So uh, oftentimes what I find is if you get a lot of protein, you'll always go for your favorite. Like my favorite is chicken right now. And then I'll eat all the chicken. And then in the house, we'll only have like beef, pork and fish left. And I'll be like, oh, I need to go grocery shopping. No. So by rotating, I'm able to actually save more money than if I were to just eat all the chicken and then just go out and buy more chicken and then it's all chicken and I never eat anything else. And it also helps with adding variety to your nutrients so that you're getting a bunch of different things all at once. So that's protein. Then when it comes to like nuts and seeds, I purchased my nuts and seeds off nuts.com. I'm like impartial to the quality. Like they're not the best quality and they're not the worst either. I just, I don't like spending a lot of money on it. And I know that there are much better brands out there, but you know, the price is right. And I use their nuts and seeds to make a lot of milks and I just find that their cashews don't taste as good as other cashews and it makes weird milk, but it's not totally weird. So I just go with it because the price is great. And to store my nuts and seeds, that's where the Brilliance containers come in again. I transfer them all from the plastic bags, recycle the plastic bags, put them in the Brilliance containers and then store them in the fridge or freezer. Or if I know that I'm going to be using them like cashews, macadamia nuts and coconut, I just keep them in the pantry. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. And then for oils and vinegars and salad dressings, I live off primal kitchen salad dressings. Sometimes there are sales in various places. I always watch for them and then I load up. I just find it so much easier. Yes, you can make your own. And my cookbook, the Keto Diet Cookbook, has like 22, I think, recipes for salad dressings and marinades, very similar to the primal kitchen products. But sometimes you just like want it now and you'll be more encouraged to eat more vegetables when you have the salad dressing ready to go. So I do enjoy having those. And then for vinegars, I pretty much default to balsamic vinegar and apple cider vinegar. It's about all like I don't, I mean, we have white vinegar, but it's mostly for cleaning the house. I don't really use it much because it can be irritating if you're sensitive to corn, which I am. And then oils. So 
there are basically three oils that I enjoy using, and it's really just because they're really easy to find. Olive oil I get from Costco, and then I have my avocado oil, which I also get from Costco, and coconut oil, which I also get from Costco. And those are really the three that I use. If I'm cooking anything in the oven, AKA my air fryer, cause we don't have an oven, then I use coconut oil or avocado oil. And if I'm making salad dressings, I'll use either avocado oil or olive oil. So I have two oils to choose from depending on if I'm cooking hot or cold foods. And that's really all that we eat. Like it's pretty simple stuff. So let's cut over to that video that I did a couple of months ago on oils and proteins and sweeteners, which provide even more in-depth support if you're struggling with keto foods and things. And something I didn't really chat about, which I should have and have many times in the past, are snacks. And so I share a lot of snacks on the podcast from the ads to when I'm chatting about what I'm eating as I'm recording. So snacks really play a huge part in my ketogenic diet. And I don't think you should be ashamed of snacking. It's something that I've really tried to fight against for so long when it comes to keto. And I've just realized I just like snacking and that's just the way that it is. Um, So be sure to check out some of the ads that I share on snacks to add some value there. And let's cut over to this video. If you want to watch the video, I'll include a link in the show notes if you want to watch along. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and listen in. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. We are still here in the Fort Lauderdale Air Airport. Oh my gosh, area. <laughs> uh, I have been experiencing symptoms of mold toxicity in the place we rented. So that's been super fun. <laughs> so now we're moving out of this place. They won't give us a refund. Uh, we're moving out of this place and trying to find another place. It's been quite a couple of weeks. I'm very much looking forward to having our house back. But hey, it's Sunday. It's relaxing time. We were going to go to a movie today. Hopefully we still get to go. I really want to see Longshot. Have you guys seen it? Awesome. Hello. Good morning, Maggie. Amanda. Curly for good. Mom Scott. Hey, guys. Hey, Pam. Hi, Anne. Okay, so we got YouTube up here. We got Instagram over here. Uh, I'm going to be reading from my book, The Keto Diet Cookbook. If you guys don't have a copy yet, what the heck? <laughs> you can pre you can order it basically anywhere. You can pick it up at most bookstores in Canada. It's at Costco. You can get it at Target in the US, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Basically all bookstores has got this bad boy. Some of you guys are asking, where's the house? Well, I live in a sailboat full time and we're doing a refit on our boat. It was, wasn't even a big refit. It was just, we needed to get some work done. We had to stay off the boat for a couple of days. It was supposed to be three. It's been four weeks and there are no places that accept two humans and three dogs. So they've been going in and out of care. And now we're in this house, which is filthy and there's mold on the walls and I'm starting to react to it. And I feel like hot garbage. So it's time to move. Um, For those watching who are like mold symptoms, what? Yeah, it's a real thing. Black mold especially is super bad for you. and you'll get joint pain, headaches, sinus pain, nosebleeds, some telltale signs that there's mold in the house. And it's a pretty serious thing. Like you shouldn't just hold on for dear life and hope it goes away because it won't. (laughs) Um, Okay, so going to be reading from this bad boy today, the Keto Diet Cookbook. I have pinned the topic that we're going to be covering today in Instagram, oils, proteins, sweeteners, And if you're like, where do I get this beautiful book? You can go to ketodietbook.com for all the details on where to find it, but it should be in most stores all over. And it's pretty easy to spot. And I did that on purpose. And this is a virtual tour event. So I'm going to be doing these or have been doing them since the beginning of April where I'm reading from my books. I haven't read from my first book here, but this guy's my first one. I've been reading from this bad boy. And then I've also been reading from my upcoming book, Keto for Women, that comes out June 18th. Okay, I'm reading from page 57. And okay, so a lot of cookbooks actually have this front matter content where they talk about ingredients, how to swap out ingredients and things like that. And 
nobody ever reads these. And it's crazy to me because they're always so, so good. So I thought that I would read to you guys today and give you some background on oils that I use, how I store those oils, foods that I use, proteins especially. And if you guys have any questions throughout the video, feel free to post them below and I'll answer them as we go. Okay, so it's easy to go overboard on buying oils, but it doesn't need to be this way. All you really need is one oil that's safe for cooking and one that's best for cold uses, like salad dressings. In the recipes throughout the book, I sometimes list various options for fats. You'll see ingredients listings like three tablespoons of avocado oil, coconut oil, or ghee so that you can decide. None of them is the best option. Use whichever one you'd like. In addition to butter and ghee as outlined in the dairy, non-dairy, options section on pages 54 to 56. These are a few fats that I use throughout the book that you may find helpful to have in your pantry. My favorites listed from most readily available and versatile to the least. Oh, I'm also going to tell you a little um, bit, maybe I'll do this after I read about dairy. So I've started incorporating dairy into my ketogenic diet and I thought I wasn't reacting to it, but I massively have, and it took like almost three weeks. Um, I'll get to that right after I read this. Okay, so the first one is coconut oil, which I find is really good for cooking and baking. Coconut oil is readily available, which is why it's my number one recommended oil. You shouldn't have a problem finding it. You could use lard, tallow, butter, ghee, or cacao butter in its place. You want me to say that again? You could use lard, tallow, butter, ghee, or cacao butter in its place. So if you don't like coconut, there is a really, really easy way that you can um, swap it out. Butter flavored coconut oil for, for cooking and baking. If you can't do butter, but you want the butter flavor, there are many coconut oils that are flavored with plant extracts to produce a buttery taste without the dairy. Anywhere where ghee or coconut oil is called for, you could use this butter flavored coconut oil in its place. It's a fairly common item at supermarkets and doesn't have the unhealthy the unhealthy processed oils that many of the butter substitute of on the market have today. My favorite brand is Nativa. So you can get this butter flavored coconut oil at Costco or Thrive. That's where I buy it. When will I translate the cookbook into Portuguese? As soon as a lot of people buy it. So the way it works with books is that um, it needs to get to a certain amount of sales in order to... Um, translate. So the more people buy it, the more options there are for translation. I'm allergic to avocado. I've been using olive oil for cooking. Is that not okay? Okay. So like I'm going to reference my other book because this bad boy has all the answers when it comes to oils and smoke, smoke points. I don't necessarily recommend cooking with olive oil. Now, do I do it? Yeah, because it tastes really good, <laughs> but it's not the best option. In the Keto Diet, my first book, I talk about what oils to cook with and smoke points of those oils. I used to know these page numbers off by heart, but I have other things in my brain now, like where I'm going to live tonight. <laughs> but anyway, in, in the Keto Diet, I talk about um, this. Oh, thank God. Uh, page 138. So I go through a whole table of fats and which ones are best for cooking and such. So if you're using olive oil, extra virgin, the smoke points 320. It's good for salads and light finishing. You store it for six to 12 months in a dark bottle, cool place out of direct sunlight. The uh, monounsaturated fat content 74%. You want to look for, and there's this little guide when it comes to it. So you want to look for organic, uh, cold pressed, extra virgin, and unrefined. Now it can be, it's really tasty to cook with olive oil, so I do cook with it, but I know that if my joints start to hurt and things like that, it can cause inflammation. So, I mean, your best bet for cooking, if you want to avoid avocado, is something like a refined olive oil. Now, when you go for a refined olive oil, make sure you get an expeller pressed, naturally refined olive oil, and that should be okay. If you also want to cook with things like if you're trying to avoid avocado, ghee, palm kernel oil, red palm oil, hazelnut oil, tallow or suet, macadamia nut oil, chicken fat or also known as schmaltz. You got duck fat, goose fat, cacao butter oil, lard or bacon grease, butter and coconut oil that you can all cook with. So there are lots of options, but like sometimes a girl just wants to eat olive oil and cook with it. And that's your choice. Okay. Avocado oil for cold uses, cooking, and baking. 
Avocado oil is the most versatile oil of all the oils. Like this is like my go-to. No, I'm not saying you need to avoid avocado. I think there was just a question about um, an avocado allergy and how to swap it out on your ketogenic diet. Please don't avoid avocado if you don't need to. Is the most versatile oil of all. It's awesome on salads and great for cooking because of its high smoke point. There are refined and non-refined options. I prefer refined because it doesn't contribute an avocado oil flavor or an avocado rather flavor to recipes. My favorite brand is Chosen Foods. You could use olive oil in its place for cold recipes only. So we just chatted about this. Being allergic to egg and avocado and almonds really makes things harder. I have to modify so much it makes it hard. I totally get it. I'm sensitive to a lot of things too. And it could be worse. You could be allergic to all nuts and all seeds. Uh, I can't wait to get my book from Amazon. Awesome. Is there a difference between cold pressed and first pressed? I saw it on a bottle of EVOO once. Okay, first cold pressed, as far as I know, it was cold extracted first. And then it was, um, oh, what's the word for it? Okay, so there's expeller pressed centrifuge extracted and cold pressed these are like the three key words to look for if it said first cold press it means they cold pressed it first but then used an extraction method that isn't approved usually now the problem with oils is that people can use a bunch of different words to explain different things and they can get away with stuff so i spent almost three weeks researching these two pages for my first book and i can tell you that the keywords to look for are cold pressed, centrifuge extracted, and expeller pressed, period. That is what I look for. No if, ands, or buts about it because it just, it gets really complicated and a lot of companies use different words to say bad things without it sounding bad. So those are like the three things I look for always. What fats are best to start keto again to help you transition in timing? All the fats. I know that's kind of like a stupid answer, but like the only thing you can do to get your body back in keto is to eat keto and eat fat. And there aren't any like better fats. It really depends on your genes. Some people respond best to uh, saturated fats over monounsaturated fats. And some people choose to do more monounsaturated. Like it, it totally depends on your body. So there's not one thing that's going to get you anything in life, sadly. Okay, olive oil for cold uses. Great for making your own mayonnaise and for adding to dressings. This oil is best used for recipes that are not cooked. I opt for extra virgin olive oil, preferably organic. If I'm making mayonnaise, I use I like using a light olive oil with minimal flavor. My favorite olive oil is Kirkland brand from Costco. Cacao butter. Now, remember I said the further we get down the line, the harder it is to find this stuff. And cacao butter is definitely harder to find than other options. Cacao butter, which is the fat from chocolate, is a little bit harder to find than the previous fats. And it's a bit more expensive than the other options. I purchased mine from Amazon and you're looking for a raw, unrefined food grade variety. Do not buy, okay, the first time I bought cacao butter, I bought cacao butter cream, like body cream, and I cooked with it and I went, <laughs> uh, funny story. I made fat bombs with it. <laughs> and then I ate, like I had like a bite of fat bomb at the same time as Kevin and he's like spat it out. He's like, what's in this? I'm like, it's cacao butter. And he's like, it, it tastes like, lotion it was lotion <laughs> so make sure you buy a food grade cacao butter back to today's episode in a sec butcher box features 100 grass-fed and finished heritage bred pork and organic free-range chicken butcher box sends you high quality health promoting meats directly to your door on dry ice and free shipping anywhere in the lower 48 butcher box makes committing to quality protein sources less expensive and more available to everyone their prices are hard to beat, and it's challenging to find a higher quality product anywhere in the USA. I've been using ButcherBox for years and love the convenience of a package showing up just when I need it, and their ground sausage is an absolute dream. ButcherBox has put together a super special deal for all listeners of the show. Order your first box and get a special gift plus an additional $20 off. Now, this special gift is so epic that I can't even mention it on the episode today. So you'll have to go to butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get your $20 off your very first order. Again, that's butcherbox.com slash keto diet to check out the deal plus get $20 off your first order. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. Okay, 
Back to today's episode. MCTO powder for cooking, baking, and drinks. MCTO powder is made from spraying MCT oil on acacia fiber, a highly soluble fiber that's sourced from the sap of the acacia tree. It's different from MCT oil in that it's, it can fully incorporate into recipes without leaving a pool of fat behind. I don't particularly like, it, like MCT oil for this reason and because it causes digestive distress in many people. But MCT oil powder doesn't have this effect. Consider more of it like a supplement. It's a great way to add fat to recipes, including baked goods, drinks, and however, it's not essential to a ketogenic diet. I love MCT oil powder, and it totally has a place in my kitchen, but it does not need to be there. It's fine. How many grams of day per day do you recommend for ladies? I'm guessing you're asking how many grams of fat per day, and that really depends on your goals, your body composition, how often you work out, if you do work out or not, what kind of workouts you're doing. I put a really, really awesome chart and calculation in Keto for Women that's coming out in June that kind of goes through everything. What brand of cacao butter do you like best? I honestly don't even know the brand. Terrasol maybe is what I have right now. I have no commitment and I say this over and over again. I have no commitment to my cacao butter choices or my collagen choices. I will literally choose whatever is cheapest and is food grade quality. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lard is another great oil. I don't really call for it in the book, but it's one of the best I will address alcohol, but today we're chatting about fats and proteins. So I will make a note to chat about alcohol this week. I use a company called Dry Farm Wines for my wine, and I'll be going through a bunch of things about wine and alcohol later this week. So hold tight. Cool. I didn't use lard in the book, but it is one of the most inexpensive fats, and you can render it yourself and actually save a bunch of money doing it. Um, so I did include it in this list. A suggested replacement item for coconut oil, ghee, or avocado oil in cooking. Lard is best used in savory dishes or when baking cookies, muffins, or cakes. It's highly saturated, offering richness to the dish it's added to. Lard is easy to find online, or you can make it your own by asking your butcher for unrendered fat, placing the fat pieces in your slow cooker, and cooking on high for three to four hours. Bits of protein will need to be strained afterward. They're delicious to just eat. I used to do that all the time. The rendered fat will keep in the fridge for months and is quite cost effective too. I explain how to render your fats in this bad boy. See, like I try not to duplicate content. So you'll never find the same thing in another book. <laughs> so you kind of need all of them if you want all the things. And I only do that because how pissed would you be if you bought this book and then it couple years later, you bought this book and then it was the same stuff. You'd be angry. So that's why I do that. Garlic infused oil. This is a great strategy for people that react to garlic. I reacted to garlic forever. Hey, a mold toxicity issue. I was exposed to mold for like a year in a house I was living in and my digestion really got nailed hard for like the whole year. And so I couldn't eat garlic or onions for years. And so I used garlic infused oil, which you can make yourself. There's a recipe in this bad boy, but I say garlic infused olive oil or garlic infused oil. is just that oil that's been infused with garlic, usually made with olive oil. If you're sensitive to garlic, as is the case for somebody on a low FODMAP diet, garlic infused oil can add garlic flavor to a dish without causing digestive distress. Another super awesome tip is that you know when you like cut up garlic and you put it in a salad dressing and then there's like a big piece of garlic and you chew on down on it and you're like, dang, I didn't cut the garlic enough. I eat like using the garlic infused olive oil in recipes because it's just really, 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 really simple and good and easy and there's no big chunks and it tastes just like garlic and it's awesome. Okay, now on to sweeteners. Wow, I think I like bit off more I could chew with all this stuff, but we'll try to get through it. There are many keto-friendly sweeteners to choose from, but I've opted to use the most common ones to keep you from running all over the city. My favorite sweeteners are erythritol and stevia. Now, I have other favorites, but I paneled you guys on Instagram and you said that you only wanted me to use erythritol or stevia in the book, so that's what I did. Now, in all the recipes, if I call for erythritol, I also call for stevia. And if I call for stevia, I also call for erythritol. And I also give you options on what to use if you just don't want to use anything, aka how to just do it unsweetened. Because there are so many needs and I try to meet everyone where they are, but sometimes I miss the mark just because everyone is so individual and that's okay. So 
with erythritol, and I'm not going to read from this because it'll take me forever and you guys don't have time for all of that, but I'll just kind of give you the Coles Notes version. With erythritol, you have either confectioner style erythritol or granulated erythritol. I bake with granulated, but I do like dressings and things like that with the confectioner style, which is like powdered erythritol. The brand I really, really like is Swerve. It's what I've always used. I really like them. The company's awesome. I've met them in real life. They're cool people. It helps. Um, Stevia liquid. Now, I only use liquid only because it's easier and I find it tastes better than the powder. My favorite one is uh, Stevia Glycerite from Now Foods. That's the only one that doesn't taste like metal grossness to me. Cool. Sweeteners done. Protein. There are, amples of what, there are ample ways to hit your protein requirements on keto, and a lot of them are pretty straightforward. Muscle meats, organ meats, seafood, eggs, and dairy, if you can tolerate it. But I have some other protein options in the recipes that may be unfamiliar to you, so it's worth a little introduction. Okay, so the first one is collagen or collagen peptides, and I've included recipe links, like little references here so you can see how collagen is used. If you really don't want to supplement with collagen on your ketogenic diet, that's fine. Just add protein powder or don't, like it's fine. It just adds protein to a recipe, but you don't have to. You can even add egg whites to like most things. Like I've added egg whites to the Hey Girl. I've added it to the, what did I call this? The Ultra Green. I've added it to the Chilled Chai and also to the Vanilla Shake. So you could easily add egg whites if you're comfortable with eating raw egg, which I've never had a problem with it ever, but I'll leave that up to you. So collagen peptides and or protein powder, all of the recipes call for either or so you guys can decide. And then gelatin. Now I didn't use this too much in the book, but I do like to include it in some recipes because I find like all of us health nuts have like a tub of gelatin with all the best intentions of using it and we never do. So I included a couple of recipes on how to add gelatin. Uh, crushed pork rinds. Guys, seriously, if you're finding it hard to hit your protein goals, cover everything in crushed pork rinds and they have protein and they're also fatty and they're just so perfect. Bone broth is another good one. My favorite brands are Kettle and Fire and Bonafide Provisions. I'm leaning more toward Kettle and Fire right now only because um, I don't need to freeze or keep their food or keep their product rather in the fridge. And for somebody who lives in a sailboat and doesn't have a lot of space and can't order food all the time, committing to having that much Bonafide broth in my freezer at any given time is just like it's cramping my style and I just can't keep up with it. So I enjoy Kettle and Fire. I also like the Kettle and Fire are lower in price, but the quality is not as good as Bonafide. Um, does anyone know if pork rinds are carb-free? They are. Bone broth. And then bacon. There are all sorts of bacon choices out there, some better than others. If your budget allows, offer uncured nitrate-free bacon. My favorite brand is Pedersen's Natural Farms. A quick tip to make crispy bacon, cook it in the microwave. Oh, the best. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.